the director of the clearinghouse, the state clearing, statewide clearinghouse for the Tennessee Alcohol and Drug Association. And Ms. Crockett, before we left, we were talking about some of the things that you are involved in uh, as the uh, director of the statewide clearinghouse. But before we uh, uh, finish this program for today, let's have you to talk about two general areas that might be helpful to uh, uh, our viewers this morning. Let's first of all have you to talk about the various kinds of programs that you're involved in, and after that to talk about the kind of services that you render. That, <coughs> that would give you an opportunity okay. to uh, give that kind of information. In 1994, when we received enhanced funding from the Tennessee Department of Health, they, they coined that initiative, the Community Education Initiative. And in essence, what it gave us was uh, several more staff, the Tennessee Red Line, an opportunity to promote A&D services across Tennessee, which historically had not been done. So what we are trying to do in our office um, is make appointments across Tennessee at different media outlets and have the providers that are funded by the Tennessee Department of Health to meet us at those outlets and we'll record a show together or we'll go on the air on a, on a morning drive show or whatever the case may be to promote alcohol and drug abuse services and mm -hmm. to also promote unity among people in the alcohol and drug field mm -hmm. in case you know somebody had a problem with that they mm -hmm. could see that yes we do work together we might be a prevention program and they might be a treatment program mm -hmm. but we work together towards the same mm -hmm. common goal when I say the uh, programs of the uh, Bureau of Alcohol and Drug Abuse Services mm -hmm. there are many and extensive programs there's um, something new coming up soon with uh, Governor Sunquist, the Governor's Prevention Initiative. Mm -hmm. I don't know too much about it yet. Um, can't give you very much on that. Um, but the Bureau funds um, several hundred programs that involve prevention and treatment mm -hmm. services mm -hmm. all the way across Tennessee. Mm -hmm. And we're just happy to be a part of that, that mm -hmm. circle. Mm -hmm. Now, what are some of the services that uh, you render in, with those programs? I mean, well, one uh, of the things that well, we... In the sense of what can you tell our audience this morning of the impact that some of these things have had upon individual lives? Well, one of the things I, that we do is we, we supply the tools for professionals to help them. Mm -hmm. If it's treatment programs or if it's prevention programs, we, we give them the latest information that's available on um, risk and resiliency factors or on treatment issues, whatever the case may be, it's our job to get this information out into to the hands of those people that can then study it and make a difference in somebody's mm -hmm. life. We know for sure we've saved lives. Mm -hmm. we, we don't have, because we don't ask names, mm -hmm. we don't have a, a litany of names we can just call mm -hmm. up because we tell our callers when they call us on the Tennessee Red Line that the call is confidential. Mm -hmm. And it's not a narc line. I've had that question asked several times mm -hmm. and we don't want to know how much money you make or where your husband works, mm -hmm. that's not an issue. Mm -hmm. We just want to get you referred as quickly as possible. Mm -hmm. One of the things that um, people have called on us for is referral for everything. Mm -hmm. We have um, over uh, 1,600 providers in our database that mm -hmm. we use to, to do referral on. These providers include emergency shelters, it includes food banks, mm -hmm. it includes programs outside of the Department of Health, it includes uh, police departments, sheriff's mm -hmm. offices, anything that it would take mm -hmm. to help put a family back together again, mm -hmm. including um, information on individual counselors. If you, mm -hmm. don't, if you don't have a treatment issue, you might just want to go see a counselor or an employee assistance program on drug testing on other health-related issues. Mm -hmm. That's basically the, the direction I'm trying to move our clearinghouse into mm -hmm. is the direction of health-related issues because mm -hmm. substance abuse touches so many areas. Mm -hmm that it would be foolish for us to sit there and think that we're only going to cover this subject and not touch anything else. You know, uh, as you explained that, uh, uh, Ms. Crockett, I think one of the things that uh, is apparent that when you talk about drug abuse mm -hmm. and alcohol, that uh, you're talking about, you know, all the services you mentioned all across the board, yes. you're, you're talking about almost every organization and every service yes, absolutely. That, uh, in, in the community. Absolutely. I mean, nobody is left untouched. The police department is impacted by it. Uh, the, the workplace. We're, we're every, every aspect of it. The church groups. I mean, we work with essentially everybody in Tennessee. We work with civic groups. We work with organizations like the Girl Scouts and Boy Scouts. We work with businesses that want to put together a drug-free workplace. Mm -hmm don't know how to put together an EAP, don't know anything about drug testing. We get them uh, information immediately in the mail to them and give them referrals on who to call at the state level or the national level or the local level. That's the beauty of our service is that we're not just sitting there with just alcohol and drugs. We're sitting there with information to help put a family back together or help mm -hmm. a workplace. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, is this organization duplicated uh, throughout uh, the nation in other states? Or what? Uh, is this something unusual in the state no. of Tennessee? Or what? How no, it's it? not. Now, uh, 
two, two things I want to touch on because you brought that up. There are clearing houses mm -hmm. in all 50 states, the Virgin Islands, Puerto, Week, Puerto Rico, America, and Samoa. Mm -hmm. there are, we're all, we were all collected electronically, but the funding was cut for the electronic communication called Prevline. Mm -hmm. So they have gone now to the World Wide Web. And unless you're on the Internet, you won't be able to be uh, connected together. Mm -hmm. that, that service is over with. But the clearing houses all across the United States, we all know each other and we all have a good relationship. Mm -hmm. Now, there are also associations like ours in other states. I would venture to guess that all 50 states do have an alcohol mm -hmm. and drug association. Mm -hmm. All indicating the importance of drug abuse and alcohol abuse yes. as some of the real problems. Well, when you consider that 50% of all crime is alcohol and drug related, mm -hmm. and we're talking about uh, what we're going to do about crime and all that, if you don't even mention mm -hmm. substance abuse in that statement, mm -hmm. then you are, are going in the wrong direction. Mm -hmm. If we, if we even took care of 25% of that crime, then maybe you could drive down the street without having to lock mm -hmm. your door. Mm -hmm. Maybe you wouldn't have to worry about a drive-by or somebody in your family accidentally getting murdered. Mm -hmm. That's the kind of situations that we deal with. When our callers call us on the red line, for example, I had a caller. Um, we have a coordinator and an information specialist on the red line, Jackie Jefferson and Rob Hawkins. That's their main function, but the rest of us are trained to be their backups. Mm -hmm. But we have situations that are considered crisis every day. When I, particularly a, a caller I had uh, who had just uh, been shot at the night before mm -hmm. with her children in the car and her, her boyfriend trying to cheat the drug man and you know you get these calls and you just mm. you just want to just the, the emotions go through you because you want to help the person but at the same time you cannot believe that they would be so stupid mm -hmm. as to take a child into a situation like that mm -hmm. and then of course there were gunshots were exchanged and mm -hmm. the, the child could have easily been murdered mm -hmm. as a result of that. And, and, and all of these things lead back to uh, substance, simply abuse. substance abuse. Uh, absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. And it's, it, it's also connected with uh, the health, uh, the health care industry. Yes. Uh, it has a tremendous, uh, I understand, a tremendous impact upon uh, uh, health and, yes, and all of the methods that we have in terms of delivering health. Yes, it all does. of these things are affected by yes, substance abuse. And, and so really you're, you're dealing with one of the major areas in terms of societal areas yes. because if, if, if we could deal with things through you then there are many other problems that we certainly wouldn't have. Wouldn't have as a result mm -hmm. of that. Mm -hmm. But we are happy to say that churches are involved now. Uh, mm -hmm. When I first started working at the Tennessee Alcohol and Drug Association almost eight years ago Churches really did not want to deal with this issue mm -hmm. because it was a moral thing, but now they've come around to see mm -hmm. that it's more, there's more to it than just that. Very and we're also working with a lot more businesses than mm -hmm. we have, and we're also working a lot more with the media because mm -hmm. we are trying to form a partnership. With and we're the going media. to talk about that when we come back after this uh, second commercial break. We'll be back with you in just